him. That's him. Alright guys, good morning. So today we've got a very special person behind the lens, Nick, which gives me the opportunity to get out here and show you guys basically in full detail how I run my day. It's actually something that I'm excited to do because there's all kind of little tips and tricks throughout the day that hope, hopefully help you. Um, very important to have a squid tracks on board and very, very important to have a jig on board, you know. Everyone's been talking about squid tracks and it's 100% a thing, but there is still a very, very special place for the jig and I'll teach you why throughout the day because we're gonna be exploring, finding little rocks, finding little isolated pins. We're gonna be fishing them hard with a jig and then we're gonna be fishing them even harder with a squid track. So everything has its reasons, everything has its purpose today. So look, hopefully it all works out and goes to plan because it's big pressure on Matt, but let's see how we go. All right, so I've just got a 120 buffalo here. We've pulled up in 50 metres of water. It's gonna to go to a little pitch out to my left because that's the way we're drifting. And by the time we get there, that 120 is gonna be on the bottom. And the idea is, this is what I call power fishing. I've just driven over this mark and I've basically pulled up base, like straight on it. And I'm just gonna, like that jig's going straight down to the bottom to find the hungriest fish. Um, we're gonna do this. That way it's gonna figure out we're going to figure out which way we're going to be drifting for the next drift. Um, but this is just kind of what I call power fishing. You pull up on it, you drop back down. <laughs> you just kind of, you bomb them. You put it on their heads and that like when you find a mark that hasn't been fished, that's the idea about dropping a jig down first because you'll beat your mates down there with a vibe. And that feels like a it's a decent little trouty, I reckon. So, little hint, if your mate's fishing a vibe, get out your 120, send it straight down, beat him down there, you'll hook the fish. Then you figure out your drift line. Then you drop your squid tracks. But, you know, you're just not gonna complain with that. It's a nice little trouty, perfect. Now I'll go da back down to the sand, I'll figure out our drift line. And it trains down to a squid tracks because you know those fish get just that tiny bit wiser now of what's going on. And the squid tracks basically it's a bit of a change up. Should nail another one. Oh, Nick. Oh, he's back. You just never know sometimes, hey. You've just got to drop and then find find out what's going on. There's one way to find out, and that's just drop a squid tracks down. And generally, that hungry fish is never going to say no to it. I have a feeling like this is a nice, a nice specimen. It is a nice specimen. The boys will take that any day of the week, you know? I'm just, I'm not gonna complain about that because that is what the boys are after here today. I don't know if you guys saw there, but they actually ate it twice. One of the biggest advantages with using soft vibes, any type of soft vibes, especially these squid tracks, is because they've got the danglies and fish basically grabs them. When they grab them, they don't have that artificial metal feeling. And then it, I kind of hit, rips it out of their mouth, but it's nearly like a natural effect. So they always come back. Every single time they come back, it's something we will uh, encounter a lot today. You know, we pushed out a little bit wider that is a stunning common trout. When you have your assist hooks and when you have your jig, um, you've always got your 
your assist hook's tied to a solid ring, and that solid ring is then tied to a split ring, and then which is attached to your jig. Sometimes you can just go directly from your assist cord to your jig, um, but what you want to do is, you know, everyone's in the habit of tying to the split ring, which is, it's right when you're using stick baits and stuff like that, but when you've got a jig on, the idea is you tie to your solid ring because what you're trying to eliminate there is any possible faults that can go wrong. So if you tie your loop knot to the actual jig or the split ring itself, you're relying on that split ring strength to hold onto the fish. Whereas if I tie directly to that solid ring, that's a solid piece of steel which is attached exactly to the hooks and there can never ever be a fault. The only fault you really can have is if the hooks are bending when you're running sea ranges that's never going to happen. So it's a really simple one in future. If you guys ever um, are tying to your jigs, just make sure you do attach it to the solid ring. Now, there's no such thing as the incorrect knot because the solid ring has the movement to it. Like I tie a loop knot because it's the strongest knot I can tie. And that's just a, a simple and effective one. You can tie basically any knot you want to that solid ring and you're always going to have the movement because you've got that split ring attached to it, but you've just got the actual strength of the solid ring itself. Oh, that's big. <laughs> Come on, baby. Come on, baby. <laughs> Get up. Get up. <laughs> Get up. Why? Oh. Try a bit of it in your face, something loud, go down there and just yell at him. <laughs> Come on baby, let's dance. <laughs> That's that first fish we're talking about. And you gotta give him hell. <laughs> Hits the bottom, couple lifts up, and they mean business. <laughs> and we've stopped him. Whew. Oh, the fellas. Okay. I'm gonna bring this down this end. That's the feeling. A feeling when you pull up on a mark and you have that little theory behind what you do, you know, drop a jig down there. You want that one fish. And I've done it to realize I've done it enough to realize that between big trout, nannies, and red, you always get that one quality fish on the first drop instantly. If you can beat your mates down there, you drop that jig like Everything has its reason, everything has its purpose, and you know you got high current areas or you're dropping down or you're exploring, get those jigs out. Now I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna pick up that 130 squid tracks, and he's going straight back down, and it's a good feeling, you know? The ultimate size Red Emperor. Anything bigger, and I'd actually let him go. Um, but yeah, that fella there, he's coming home. All right guys, it's always that epic feeling when like you have a plan and it just, it all comes together. So, you know, we just strand over that rock, perfect little rock, bombed it down with a jig, had the theory, the theory works, and now we know there's fish on it. I know exactly which way I'm gonna be drifting. So I've switched over to the, the squid tracks now and I've gone to a 130 because we've actually, I'm just gonna pitch this out here. Um, now when things just go to plan, we've got wind with tide. So I've gone to a 130, we are still fishing 50 meters of water, but when you have wind with tide, it's just that lovely drift. So I've actually gone another 50 meters past, and I'm probably gonna drift another 50 meters past it again. Um, and the idea is I'm just gonna send the 130 down there because the fish are gonna become a little bit more aware of what's going on, um, and you wanna change it up. You send that jig straight back down there. You know, they could just be a little bit curious to it. So we send the 130 squid tracks down, we're just gonna drift with the tide. It's gonna be a lovely long drift and it's just gonna hopefully be that finesse bite. So that's the plan to the next theory. Let's see if we can nail that one. Let's 
That's him. That's him. <laughs> oh, that's two fingers. Oh. <laughs> Come on. Come on, baby. Please, please be a red red, not a stripy red. I've earned you today. I've earned you today, mate. I'm burning here. I'm burning. Don't tell me to stripe your head. Look. It's not a fishing trip without Matt catching a stripy red. Oh. It's not a fishing trip without Matt and the Chinamen. We have this amazing love-hate relationship where they just absolutely flog me. They're always massive. You would have seen there the reach forward for the second hand to grab the spool because the first thumb is already blistered. Oh, they you know what? Good on them. Hey, I'll never ever be a fish snob to the Chinamen because they pull their absolute weight. And um, please be a good boy here. But look at that thing. They've just got the biggest paddler. Absolute girth on it too. Like, oh, he wants to go. I'm going to send him back, but... Look, I'm not scared to go again, but yeah, if you can see the old thumb, when you're running squid tracks just around these deeper, untouched waters, that blister there speaks a lot for itself, you know? <laughs> it's, it's fun work out here. It's very fun. Oh, jeez, come back. That's how it, hold on, hold on. That's what I was saying before with the squid tracks being a soft vibe. You should get that second bite. It's very rare that you don't get the second bite. Wow, this guy's dogging it out. Yep. We've got him off the bottom. He's fighting like a stripey, but you never know. I'm huffing and puffing here. Hey, stripey. I'm gonna be a broken man if this continues, but we found a couple more lumps. <laughs> Just. These things pull so hard, hey. Good fun. Baby, come back. I'll go again on him. Oh, did, he did eat that. We teased him and teased him. Oh, I don't know what this is. But, he liked the squid. I don't know what it is. Can't call it. 
That's what I can't call it for. Look, as weird as they are, there's not much that doesn't eat a squid, hey? That is a very, very strange looking trigger. All right, so we're coming into that golden hour and um, we, we need that one hero fish. Like for me, there's that one hero fish that just absolutely makes the day and you talk about it and you think about it. So when it happens, if it happens, it's just the most incredible feeling. So we've started looking around again, looking for these isolated rocks. So we're back on the theory. We're gonna put a jig down there. Found a little rock in front of us. I'm just gonna pitch it out. I know the rock's about 10 meters on my left there. So basically gonna bomb it, find out what happens and quickly move around because this is it. This is a time where stuff starts getting very serious, coming to the end of the day. And uh, you could hear Matt yelling, hopefully. Like that's, if I nail that one fish today, Oh, you come back, something. There he is. So if you, if you saw what happened then, I pulled hooks on a good fish and other fish are always extremely inquisitive of another fish being hooked. So if you pull hooks, don't panic. Basically hold the jig in position and give it a couple of big flicks. And that second fish that comes up to have a look at it and watch the other fish, he sees the opportunity as the jig comes out and he'll nail it. So that one worked pretty nicely, but not red. But it's a whole nother species again. So. Spangle Emperor. We're really ticking off some species today. Well. It took a little bit, but bringing it up into the water column. This fish has seen it, he's come over. Kind of feels a bit like a trout. Oof. You know what? I'll take that. You know, this morning we told you guys the idea and we're sticking with it because it's totally a theory. Get to a spot, drop down your jig, nail that hungry fish, let the fish become aware that's totally fine because then we're gonna drop a 150 squid tracks on them. And I guarantee they're gonna eat it because everything's now gonna be up and about. That one fish would have caused a bit of commotion and now I'm gonna present something completely different to them. One of the biggest techniques I've, and most effective techniques I've found is we call it the fleeing squid. Basically what you do is as your, your squid tracks are sinking down the bottom, the fish are all super inquisitive. So they're gonna come in and check out what this thing is. And quite often you can see it on the sounder, you know, the fish will actually chase the lure down. So sometimes the fish isn't gonna bite. You can actually, you can get a, re it's called a reaction bite. And it's kind of like that 50-50 outcome where you can burn it from him and in his brain he just kind of has to say, eat it or don't. And in that situation, most of the times if he's not going to eat it, that fleeing squid technique will kind of just trigger his brain into biting it. So, you know, when you're chasing reds and you're chasing those bigger, smarter fish, they'll come in, they'll come and look at it, super inquisitive. And just that kind of running squid where you pull it away from him is just enough sometimes to get him to grab it. Oh. oh. Yep. <laughs> the fleeing squid. <laughs> That's a good fish. That's a really good fish. <laughs> Come on, 
baby. <laughs> Oh, stop it! Hello, look out! <laughs> well, just put it out there. I'm manifesting that this afternoon we've probably only got about an hour or so of light, but I'm going to go to town on these fish. With a species list, I've said it multiple times today, but we are absolutely kicking goals of the species. So, good job, fish. He's going to go straight back. And uh, Matt's going to work here. Getting eaten. <laughs> what are you, leave it up. Definitely got eaten. It's not all. Come on, what's going on? And you can feel a lot, like, because it's, because you've got so much direct contact, you feel every touch. I don't know what this is, but I ate it about halfway down, so what are we talking here? Getting bigger. They're getting bigger. Cracking jobby, that one. He liked it a little bit quicker. He was there for a minute, you know, just toying around with it, toying around with it. And then the fleeing squid, it's that reaction bite that nails them every single time if they're unsure. Whew, all right, we haven't got much time here, so I'm just uh, gonna do my thing. He's going back nicely. See you, buddy. All right, back at it. Oh, come on, baby. Oh, he keeps whacking it. Run it from him. Oh, he keeps whacking it. Come on. Oh, come on. Oh, geez, that's big. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Come on. Get off that. Get off that. <laughs> oh, my God. My thumb is so so. <laughs> Get off. <laughs> <laughs> I've just locked the spoiler because my, <laughs> my thumb's done. It's blistered already. <laughs> Come on, baby, get it up. <laughs> oh. I'm puffing here. I'm blowing steam. That could only be one thing. Oh.
ใส่เช่นปอดไทยยะสกายทิ้งส์ฉันต้องกลับมาที่เดิมได้ไหมสวัสดีฉันจะต้องไปพักที่นี่ถ้าสตรอปคนนี้อยู่ในฮอตในตอนนี้ฉันจะปรับปรุงมันนิดนึงฉันจะเอาเข็มออกจากล่างและจับมันให้ได้มากที่สุดเพราะฉันได้ไปจับชีพของเขาบ่อยๆฉันได้ไปจับเขาบ่อยๆและเขาหักหนาในล่างฉันจะปรับปรุงมันนิดนึงแล้วฉันจะเอาเข็มออกจากล่างฉันจะปรับปรุงมันนิดนึงแล้วฉันจะเอาเข็มออกจากล่างฉันจะปรับปรุงมันนิดนึงแล้วฉันจะเอาเข็มออกจากล่างฉันจะปรับปรุงมันนิดนึงแล้วฉันจะเอาเข็มออกจาก It's just all working today, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, guys, that wraps up the day. You know, we had a theory today where we came out and we used the jig. And know everyone's talking about squid tracks and how it's such an incredible lure, but you'll never ever see me go out without a jig in my boat. They still have a very special place and a very very special use. And power fishing today, we kind of proved that. Going into those certain isolated rocks, dropping down that jig, nailing those fish, and swapping over to the squid tracks, and then nailing them again. You know, we've we've got a theory behind it that works, but that's my theory. So you know, what I'd love for you guys to do is take out something from today. And get your own theory behind it. You know, you might take out that little snippet of what I've used, but if you guys can take out something and then add in your own part, that's what it's all about. Figure out what they want to do, how they want to bite. But between me, jigs, and vibes, they're still equal part in my boat. That's for sure.